you get to go back over it. But what I want to do is just get our mind in the right frame of, uh, you know, our thoughts process in the right frame of mind. My name is Gary DeBose. For those who don't know me, I am uh, originally from Arkansas and then moved to Missouri for most of my life. Lived about uh, 20 years in uh, Hawaii and now live in uh, Savannah, Georgia and go back and forth from uh, Georgia to Hawaii. Uh, my wife is a real estate broker, very talented, very talented woman and apparently has a cold. Um, but um, she's uh, very talented in her own rights and has built a, a good company uh, over in, in Hawaii. Um, we flip houses. We do assisted living. We have mobile home parks. We have all kinds of investments and then also in uh, stocks and other things. And um, this is just a way for you to learn how to think a little different. And I'm hoping that you guys get something from it. I hope it's good for you. And, and uh, if you like it, stick around and listen. If you don't, I have nothing to sell today. Uh, I also have nothing to give away, just so you know. Um, I'm not selling anything. I'm not, uh, you know, setting up or anything. This is literally just a, a free webinar to get to know us and what we do and, and kind of see how we think. So hopefully that this, this helps you. Um, I have had, had the privilege of being raised by a preacher. Uh, my dad was a pastor for most of uh, most of my life. He was a milkman when I was very young and then a pastor most of my life. Um, he taught me how to look at things differently. I attribute most of what I'm able to do to my father, um, making my mind work different than the average guy. And I'm hoping that you guys can see some things today that will make you think a little bit different. All right, let's run through. I just want to go through some of these. Uh, I was told to get up early and work hard when I was you know, young. That's what my grandpa did his whole life. That's what my father did his whole life. But they, they would work really hard, but um, you've got to work hard and smart together. I think you've got to put in the hours and put in the time, but you've got to do both. Keep your eye on the real prize. What is your why? In my case, my why is my, my family and my God. Uh, but that should be your best motivator. Start before others are in your space and stay longer. So whatever it is you're going to do in real estate or in any type of business that you're going to do uh, to, to try to grow to, to make some money is you've got to do more than the other people are to get ahead of the other people. Uh, no working by the hour. We're going to talk about that here in a minute on the second portion of it. Don't let the failures of others stop your success. Learn from their mistakes and then do it. Yes men seldom lead the way. I, I can't stand to have a bunch of guys that are just yes men. Uh, when I make a decision, then it's yes. But up until the point I make that decision, I take the information from everybody I can, even people I disagree with, or even people I know that don't like me, I will take the information from and learn from. You can learn from anybody. So I, I don't like yes men, um, but, but at least when we make a decision, then it's a yes thing from there on out. I like to take bad news. It's the most important news. Some people are always worried about getting the bad news or not wanting to hear the bad side. That's the side I want to hear the most. It makes me the most money to either know the bad side or flee away from the bad side. Don't automatically trust people who have something at stake in your decision. So they might not be the best judge. A realtor, if you're buying real estate, is not the best, the best person in your interest. A guy who's trying to get you to invest in stocks, I'm not sure I would listen to everything he says because he gets paid off of how many times you trade your stock, and uh, you want to be careful. So whatever it is that you're doing in investments, you've got to be careful. Um, I don't listen to other people who've never done anything. They've never made any money. I won't listen to them. Uh, on making money, I might listen to them on what they do. If a guy's an electrician, I might talk to him. Or if a guy's a drywaller, I might talk to him. But if a drywaller tells me how to invest my money and he's you know, making $50,000 this year and I'm making $51,000, I don't want him to necessarily uh, be the guy who tells me what to do. Understand people, motivation. If you want to make a lot of money, you will learn people's how they are, their money. Do they want status? Do they want love? Do they want reputation? Do they want power? All of those things. Uh, hugely come into play. Know when to walk away. Everybody says, oh my goodness, I've been working on this deal for four weeks. It doesn't matter. I've been working on one deal for almost four years. And if you got to walk away, you got to walk away. The most important thing to do is when you're in a hole, stop digging. And uh, just some ideas from the first uh, webinar. We have um, many things we went through. I've got a whole list here. I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I'll show you the list and then maybe you can go back and look at it and pause your computer uh, when we're doing it, read through them in the first one. Everything you, get, uh, you say can cost you or help you. Choose your words wisely. When you're talking to people, know when to stop talking and let them talk. Many times I'll let somebody who's trying to talk to me about their mobile home park talk themselves into a corner. Uh, and I think it's a re really important uh, that you listen more than you talk. Don't just keep, keep talking. Uh, I've often regretted my speech, but I've seldom regretted my silence. And I think that's a huge, a huge thought. 
adjust information to reality. Make sure that you're getting the truth. We're going to talk about that in a second, too. A wise man controls his temper. He knows anger causes mistakes. When you are upset, uh, I have three things in my life that, that I don't like to do, make mis decisions at when. One, I don't like to make decisions when I am hugely upset. Even my children, with correction, we have rules on the refrigerator, but they come in, it's time for correction, and I'm still upset. I will not um, either spank or, or um, ground and make a decision on grounding on my children when I am upset. I've got to make that decision when I'm calm. I, I think you should control your, control your anger. Secondly, I don't drink. I've seen how I eat, and uh, I like to eat, so I'm afraid to drink. I've never tasted alcohol or drank alcohol. I don't think you should make good decisions or make decisions. You probably don't make good decisions when you drink, so I, so I, I don't drink. Thirdly is in duress. The worst time in the world for you to make a decision is in duress. When you're in duress, you need to get good counsel. When you're upset, when you're hurting, it's the worst time in the world. Good marriages have been ruined. Good corporations have been destroyed, and good people have been hurt all because of making the decisions when you're under stress. Uh, you can't change the cards life deals you, but you can change the way you play with them. So, you know, I'm not going to get any taller. I'm pretty much there. I'm 53 years old. I'm as tall as I'm going to get. I can get wider or I can get less wide. Those I have a little bit of control on, but I have the body and the, and the life that I'm dealt, uh, how you play them is. Um, let me go through. Uh, these are the 17 things, 17 things we talked about rich people do, and I gave the, uh, the list. Oh, let me go back one. I gave the list. Some of the important ones are um, wealthy people think big, and I think that's a really huge one right there. Wealthy people think big. Um, if you want to change your life, you're going to have to think different with your life and think different with your ideas, and hopefully um, you, can, you can see a future of where you want to go, and then start doing the things that make you head for or go after uh, that future. Um, and then, um, I like this one, wealthy people choose to get paid based on results. Poor people choose to get paid based on time. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit, too, uh, on the money side. Um, wealthy people think both. So we don't think, hey, do I want to get a car or a boat? Um, we want to figure out how to make enough money to get a car and a boat. Um, and, uh, by the way, we don't, I don't even own a boat, and I drive an old Ford truck. Um, but but I, we, I would I would have both if I wanted to have both I would I would focus on trying to get both I wouldn't just think one one way. This one's really important. Wealthy people focus on their net worth, and poor people focus on their working income. Now here's the problem with trying to teach folks on how a millionaire thinks is sometimes you become offensive. If I say anything offensive, I wish I could open up and have people that are on this webinar that know me well that have lived around me, uh, been around me most of my life. I have people on here that know me 53 years, and I have people on here because they were there when I was born, and I have people on this webinar that have known me uh, for 25 years and 30 years. They know my heart is correct, my, my desire is right. Sometimes I say things that are a little offensive, and I apologize, but I really want you to get it. So when I say something about wealthy people and then poor people, and you're, and you're right now poor, I'm not having this webinar to defend you. I'm having this webinar to help you step up and to give you a different perspective, and I hope that I can help you. Uh, you know, and it, and it can make a difference. So I, I just want to throw that out there. So because sometimes I come across uh, a little a little rough. Um, wealthy people manage their money well. Poor people mis uh, mismanage their money. And and I and I saw this this past week. I was with some people, a husband and wife, and they both smoke. And I don't smoke, but it doesn't bother me if they smoke. But they choose to smoke. Now they don't have a lot of money, and they chose to smoke with. And here's the thing that they're going to smoke. And I'm not positive, but I think if you go buy, buy uh, cigarettes by a carton, it's cheaper. But they'd go down to a little gas station not far away, and they would buy at this most expensive gas station anywhere around where I live, uh, they would buy one pack of cigarettes, and then two days later or a day later or whatever it was, they go buy an, another pack. I never have understood that. I, I mean, if you're going to smoke, you certainly ought to do it the cheap way, I would think. But it's mismanaging your money. It's not a wise. It, I don't think any of that's a good decision, by the way. But I'm saying if you're going to make that decision, uh, make it with a little bit more uh, knowledge and intrigue. I'm not trying to help anybody figure out. It says can't hear any sound other than music. Can anybody else hear? It? Does anybody else hear music? Jody, are you in there? I, I hear you perfectly fine, Gary. Okay, so somebody's got something else. Uh, uh, I don't know who that is that wrote that, but you probably got something else on your computer. 
Yeah, I've got. I just got 50 fines. So whoever that is, your computer has something on. It's not on the uh, the webinar itself. Hopefully, hopefully you can fix that. Um, wealthy people act in spite of fear. Listen, you're you're going to have to step out and do something different to be different than who you are. You're going to have to go out of your norm and out of what you usually do um, to make that ha happen. Thank you, uh, William. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so you're going to have to step out and make sure that. You, you're not scared to make a decision that will come, could ultimately change your life. Now, let me, let me give you an easy decision. To, to be a multi-multi-millionaire, let me give you an easy decision. In most states, not in Hawaii, but in most states, you walk into a grocery store or you walk into a gas station and you give them a dollar. I'm not sure the lottery is a dollar, so I'm just saying this for a number. You give them a dollar and they give you a ticket and then um, two nights a week or something, you could win millions of dollars. That's not really an act of fear, right? You spend a dollar, you got a chance to win millions. It's an act of maybe stupidity sometimes, and I, I like to be stupid every once in a while. It's an act of stupidity. Somebody just said the lottery was up to $430 million last week. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I, I should have bought a ticket. And the truth is uh, it was at $40 million the next day because somebody won it, and I'm thinking, I could use $40 million too. How many people couldn't use forty million? Why you got to wait till it's four hundred million to buy? I mean, forty million, you probably have an okay life. I'm not saying it's going to be a great life. I understand that four hundred million would be a lot better, but forty million probably is going to set you and your children okay for a while. Um, but you could buy a lottery ticket. That doesn't take any fear. Now to go out and buy a car tomorrow that is ten thousand dollars, but it's worth fifteen thousand dollars, and hopefully you can buy it, fix it, and sell it, or buy it, work on it, sell it, or just buy it and have it and market it right and sell it. That's kind of a step out in fear. To go and buy, a, I looked at today, a million dollar property in um, Little Rock, Arkansas, and to buy a million dollar property and it's got uh, multiple apartments, to go and step out and buy that piece of property, that is a little bit more of fear because you're signing for something that's a little bit larger. I met with a, uh, a guy named Harvey today, and Harvey's a billionaire, and I spent some time with Harvey on the phone today, and, and uh, trying, I'm trying to borrow $14.6 million from Harvey. It's a, it's a pretty big step to step out there and try something that is not normal or not the norm for you. And if you want to make something different of your life, you're sometimes going to have to go against what is everyday normal to, to get up. There are, it's important, millions and millions of people who wish they could change their life, but because they don't have the chance or take a chance to go out and try something different, uh, they, they don't. All right, so that's kind of the first things we talked about. Um, and I want to change a little bit this time on more of uh, huge money mistakes in investing or things that hurt you financially in investing uh, and, and let this part two be a little bit more about that and hopefully I can get to some of the things I would like to get everything I have today I, I never am I'm sure I always try to plan to give you more stuff than I have time for uh, so let's go through these and I'm going to talk about each one, and we'll get as many of them as we can. We're done. Who knows? We might have a mindset of a millionaire three someday um, if I don't get done. And opinions instead of facts. This is where everybody that works on my team with me that we buy, uh, I have a whole team that buys properties, whether it's houses or assisted living or um, mobile home parks, apartment buildings, anything that makes money. Um, sometimes they will listen to a realtor's opinion instead of what the real facts are. You should always be getting the facts and never just sitting and listening uh, to someone who's just giving their opinion. They say, listen, this thing's probably worth a million dollars, all right? That's, wow, that's great. I tell you what you do. Prove to me how come it's worth a million dollars. One of my guys on the team today called me and said, I've got a house, and this, uh, you know, the house is, uh, it looks to me like it could be the right offer. I said, all right, it doesn't sound right. Something sounds wrong. Two plus two is always four. Go back and do a little more research and find out the comps and find out these things and then prove to me that this is real. And I trust this guy. I've trusted this guy with my own house. He's lived in my place here in Georgia, took care of my farm. We're very close. He's like a, a brother to me. He's stayed at my house for months and months and months on end. Uh, I, I count as one of my best friends. I still went back to him and said, I don't want your opinion. I don't want a realtor's opinion. I want you to prove, prove the facts to me. In your investing career, if you're going to make it anywhere, you're going to need people to prove the truth to you. If somebody tells you this business is awesome and it's worth $2 million, say to them, prove to me how it's worth $2 million. Show me your income. 
uh, for me, a two million dollars has got a, a two million dollar business has got to be making about four hundred thousand a year, and that's a that's a big chunk. So if it's going to be worth two million and it's not making four hundred thousand a year, it's probably not something I'm going to buy. I'm going to find, try to find the best of the best. I don't just buy businesses to be in business. We have nine already. I want I want to have less than nine, and so I buy things um, and try to and try to find deals that that are super great. So when somebody says this thing's worth this amount of money, I say okay. Show me your bank statements and show me your income. So a lot of time they want to send you a rent roll or they want to send you something they just put out there. That's an opinion of what it is. I want the true facts of what it is. So I want the rent roll that says you took in, you know, eighty forty-eight thousand dollars last month to match the deposit slips that you have going in the bank that you put forty-eight thousand dollars in the bank. That's facts, not opinion. Hopefully that maybe you guys can get that a little bit. Then you spend. Uh, you, you overspend. Some people buy things. I know a lot of people right now. Uh, my wife and I went to the courthouse steps, first of November, babe. I think it was the first week, huh? Yeah, the first. First week in November down here at the courthouse steps, and there's a guy that's going to be Mr. Super Flipper. You can kind of tell by the way he acted, the way he stood, the clothes he wore, that he was some, in his mind, let me say, he was somebody. They started the bidding, and my wife and I were buying a note on a house that was the second note, not the first, the second. Now, everybody listen carefully. Unless you know a lot about what you're doing, never buy a second note. The second note is absolutely useless if the first note forecloses, unless you have some value in the house you know, you have some control in the house you know, or the second is worth way more than what you're going to pay for it, and you know when the house sells, you're going to get paid. That, that's it. That's other than that, you shouldn't buy a second. A second's a horrible thing to buy. In this case, we had the first under contract, so I can go to this house and buy the first, but I have to pay off the second that's going to foreclose. So I go to the courthouse steps. The second's worth ninety thousand dollars, maybe, but the bidding started at fifty-four thousand. I'm thinking this is great, and and another guy starts bidding against me, and we go up to about sixty-five or seventy-five thousand, and I stop. And this young boy walks up, looking like Mister I'm going to flip houses guy, and he bids all the way up to I think a hundred and four thousand for something that's worth ninety. At that moment, he overspent. Now, I just simply walked over by him closely, and I said, "That seems like a lot of money to pay for a second." He said, "What?" I said, "Seems like a lot of money to pay for the second note." He goes, that's not the first? I said, no, you're buying a second. It's got a $110,000 first on it. You've surpassed what the house is worth. And he goes up to the guy and goes, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my bid. I didn't, I, I didn't know it was the second. I thought it was the first. I'm pulling my bid back. And then we started a bid over, and, of course, Tiffany and I won the bid, and, and uh, we now uh, have, the, have the house. But if you're not careful, you overspend. When you're buying anything, I don't care what it is, buy your profit. I stopped today and I picked up a four-wheeler we have that was broken down. And they fixed it and uh, had all kinds of problems. Apparently, my children just ride the four-wheelers until the wheels literally, I'm talking about literally, fall off. And uh, so we took it in. We got it all fixed. While I was there, he says, hey, you've been wanting a big four-wheeler for yourself. I got our 420 out there. He says, that's $3,300. Wow. I said, it looks really nice. Oh, it's cleaned up, everything. Well, I you know, pull out my phone. I said, what are you doing? So I'm seeing what that four-wheeler is worth. He said, well, I want $3,300 for it. I said, well, I know that, but I'm not going to give $3,300 unless I know what it's worth. And he said, you always look at the value of things. That's exactly right. I look at the value of whatever it is. I tried to buy his business. I tried to be his partner because if, if I was his partner, I'd know how to make a lot more money. Want to clean the place up, and I, I just like him. He's in my little bitty town here called Guyton in uh, uh, Georgia, and, and so I like him. And he's like, you're always looking at value. Listen, if you don't buy your profit the day you buy anything, you've overspent. You need to know what you're getting before you step in. Uh, one of the guys on the team and I today was talking about, we don't want to go do a $600 inspection on a house that they're going to turn around and say, you don't want this house because of, go see the house. Why? I don't want to overspend or spend anything I don't have to. You buy your profit at the beginning. Here's a good truth that, to have the mindset of a millionaire. Adjust your spending to your income is a mistake. Let me say it again. Adjusting your spending to your income is a mistake. I have friends my whole life. They got a raise, so let's say they got a $2 raise, that's $80 a week. They were all excited about getting $80 a week, and the first thing they went down and did was bought a $200 payment. Maybe a new four-wheeler, maybe a new car, maybe a new truck, something that doesn't make them money, unless, of course, they're an Uber driver. 
um, but doesn't make them any money. They went down and buy a new car because they had uh, two, uh, $320 a month coming in more, and they went and bought something that was 200 So now they didn't really change their life much except for maybe $120, uh, which is $40, uh, I'm sorry, $30 a week. So now they have $30 a week to go out and eat. And other than that, that raise didn't do a thing for them. Why? They would adjust their spending to their income. That's a huge mistake, unless it's down. Now, if you're going to adjust your spending and you realize, my, I'm not going to make as much money this year, so I'm going to have to adjust my, my spending. There's many times that my wife will say, you didn't do as much this year as you did last year. We're going to have to adjust your spending. And I get an allowance. I know you guys find it hard to believe. But I get it. when my wife gives me money, I got a little bit of cash. I don't do the money. I don't even know how much money. I couldn't tell you what's in any bank account I have except my business bank accounts. And she can tell you everything else. She could just take me for a ride if she wanted to. But I love her, and I hope she I get to trust her until I'm dead. And if not, at least she's a really good-looking woman. I get to live with her until I'm dead. So I'm I'm okay with either one. Um, but I don't take I don't take care of this. I don't really pay attention to that stuff. But she'll say to me, Hey, we got to cut back on spending because I have a tendency to just go out and buy crazy stuff and I, I'm you know gonna fix it up or I'm gonna sell it or I'm gonna do things with it because I enjoy every minute of my day doing something to make money. It's it's fun for me. And it's it's a game. Everything's a game of what I can buy it for and what I can sell it for. It's just enjoyable for me. But if you don't learn to adjust your spending down and control that, now I'm not talking about savings, so we're gonna get that in a minute because there's a big difference between savings and I'm not I'm not a big proponent of savings and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but I, I think you need to adjust your, your, your spending to your income if it's going down or if you're going down on your spending and your in, income is going up. What you shouldn't do is every time you go up, buy a bigger house, get a nicer car, what you ought to do is build up a future and build up money so that you don't have to worry about everything in your life and then step up and go to the next step of, of doing it. Number four, you focus on saving, not earning. This is huge. There's a lot of people that make a, a, a terrible mistake is that you try to do everything you can to save, 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 save. And I want to kind of give you an idea or a picture of what saving does. So we buy bread. When I was a kid, you could buy a loaf of bread for a nickel. It might have been 10 cents. I think it was 10 cents. 10 cents. So let's go back. And I was, uh, let's say I was 15. So um, let's make it 13. So that's 40 years ago. So 40 years ago, bread was 10 cents. And now, 40 years later, bread is 80 cents. Then I, I've got to look at that, and every 10 years, bread went up uh, 15 cents. Then that means that I need to have 1.5 growth on my money so that what I, the money I had when I was 15 to buy bread today, I needed to make at least 1.5% more than I had. I could Just the money in the bank wasn't a great deal. I have people all the time say, listen, we've got 200000 in the bank. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I had one guy tell me he has over over six hundred thousand dollars in the bank, and I thought that's silly. Is it in one bank? He goes, well, sure. I deal with one bank. They treat me good. I said, dude, if they go under, you're going to get two hundred fifty thousand for your six hundred thousand. Take it out and put two hundred thousand in each bank in different banks and stop that stupid stuff. Um, but I said, what's that going to do for you? Now, the good thing is he still has six hundred thousand in the bank five years later. But it's still six hundred thousand. It hasn't made any money. I think his interest on he showed me a hundred thousand dollar CD made two hundred and sixty, two hundred and eighty dollars in in a year. I'm thinking that's just silly. Now that's his choice to do. But if you focus on saving and not earning, you will never get ahead because you can't take five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, even twenty percent of your income. And and do that for twenty years and expect to live off that twenty percent for the next twenty years because you need 100% to live off of and you need the growth process of 2 or 3% a year at the very least. I would say if you're not making 5% a year, you're going backwards. But let's say 2 or 3% to be very, very uh, conservative. If you're not earning any money on that money, then you are losing money every single year. If you don't believe me, go back and buy a car in the 70s and then now buy a car now and the percentage and the amount of money and what it is is, is, is much, much higher. And it's, of course, not the growth of what the car cost. It's the growth of the dollar the, or the negative of the dollar, um, not that itself. But as the dollar goes backwards, you're losing money every day. So if you focus only on savings, you might last three to five years after retirement on that savings. But that's about it. I see this commercial on TV. It cracks me up every time I see it. A bunch of people get these paint rollers, and they go, well, what do you think you're going to need to have for your retirement? I'm thinking, 
you stupid people need to put them rollers to use all right, but go paint an extra house on a weekend and make 300 bucks. If your income is normally 500 and you make 300, now you're doing something. But if your income is 500 and you save $80 of it or $50 of it, you're going to starve to death when you're 65, 70, 75 years old. So you can't focus just on the savings. You must focus on changing your future. Some of my best investors I have are good people. They're in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and they have saved up some money, and I do everything I can. One, I protect their money. I'm very safe and cautious where I put their money. Two, I make the value of whatever it is be way, way higher than what money they put in, and then, and then we do some. We, we, we buy houses and we buy uh, properties and we do things with us. Why? Because I want to make sure that their money is safe. They're trusting me with that money. What they're not doing, though, is just letting that money sit in an account and do absolutely nothing for them. Can't focus on saving. you got to. You have to. Listen, you have to focus uh, on earning and how can you make more money. You worry about price when value is involved. Now, this is very important. I have certain people that work with me that their value is way greater than what I ever could pay them. Their value is awesome. Now I'm going to give you a funny one because we're building our house here, and uh, I don't know if my son is on here. His name's Chris. Let me look. He's not on here right now, but Chris, he was going to be on here tonight. But Chris is uh, my son. Uh, Chris has a value. I, I pay Chris a, a, a paycheck when he works every week, gets paid by the hour. He, he's working on my house here that I live in now. We built it since uh, March 9th. Uh, it's about 5,000 square feet. We bought it, built, started on March 9th, and we moved in June, uh, July 8th. Um, but we built this big house, got a swimming pool in the middle, half in the house, half out of the house. And um, you can see it on Facebook probably if you want to. Um, but we, we built this house. What fun for me was is every week I'd go to buy materials, I'd take Chris with me. Chris is military, and he would use his military ID, and, and it's his car. He has his own. It's my card. I guess I pay for it, but it's his credit card. And he would use his credit card, and we would save gobs of money. And then I take him out to dinners for the money that we saved or take him to do stuff or pay for him to do stuff because he would save that money. But it was pretty funny. His value was greater. I had other people working for me too, but they didn't bring that value to the table. And I, his, his value was different. Sometimes you got to look at price and realize price is not the best thing if the value is greater. So sometimes there's some things you look at. My wife and I were watching some, some funny show on TV the other day, and this guy brought in a horn that you use to fill up a gunpowder gun and they were playing some kind of prank on him and they bought it for like $35 or $45 and then they had a fake auction and sold it for like 25000 or something and the guy was just like you know beside himself he didn't know what to do he was just losing it and he goes oh I guess you just really didn't know the value sometimes the value and price is not always the same there's times when my employees or people that work with me or people that I put into business or things that I do deals with that I give them more than what they say because their value is often greater than the price that they that they said. I have a man that's working with me now, and we don't get to do a lot together yet, but he's over a period of time, hopefully uh, going to take over a lot of things and working with me. And I think his value is great. I would do things for him I would never do for someone else in our business dealings because his value is greater to me than the price. And so you've got to really learn that in everything in business, even when you're buying things, Sometimes the value is greater. You might be buying a property and realize that the new Walmart's coming up and somebody else doesn't, then it doesn't really matter what the price is if you know the value of what the land's going to be in a week or two. Okay, here's a really big mistake in investing. Money is not abundant. There is so much money in this world. I live outside of Savannah, Georgia. We can go down to Savannah, Georgia on a Friday evening or a Saturday evening, and you can't hardly walk on the streets. There's so many people on vacation, so many people going up and down the streets. We went to Washington, D.C. There, You go in the, in the museums. You can't hardly walk around. There's so many people all going around and on vacation uh, in the museums. We go to Hawaii, and you have to have a pl flights that are completely booked full. Um, I get bumped out of first class, and which really irritates me because my wife says I'm a travel snob. Thank you, dear. Um, but I, I like to fly first class. I just don't like to pay for it. So I use my miles and always try to get first class. And sometimes I get bumped out because, especially the flights to Hawaii, because they're always packed full. And I'm thinking, if we're in such a recession with so many problems, what are all these people doing going on vacation? Often we'll be out during the day going to the store. My wife and I are looking and go, what are all these people doing? Surely they can't be in real estate like we are. But I get I get tickled because 
so many of you will listen to other people tell you, I can't, I can't, I can't because of money. And I'm going to get to a couple of statements about money, so don't leave me. i got some really good statements coming up. But money is not in abundance is the biggest lie that's being spread across this country right now that you can't get money. Now, let me give you some options. There's hard money. I have never used hard money. I don't know anything about hard money. I've always used other people's money and my money. But hard money lenders right now can't hardly lend their money because there's so many options of low dollars. So when the hard money lenders made most of their money, that's when interest rates were 6 7 and 8%. It was harder to get a loan. It was a lot of work. And hard money lenders were easier to deal with, so guys were going to them. They got so used to them. There's a guy on TV. I think it's called Flip It or Flop or something like that. And uh, when they talked to us about doing TV, I told them we don't want to do TV because it makes us look stupid. And uh, I don't want to look stupid. I want to control it. And, and in the contracts, they would never give us control. So we never um, decided, my wife and I and our kids, to go on TV uh, to, to do a TV show. But I watched these guys on a TV show. And this guy's like, we've got to get this done. This money is costing me $2,000 a week. And I thought, man alive, what did you borrow that money at? Because if he's doing a $100,000 house and it's $2,000 a week, it's some kind of horrible hard money. He's got to make a bunch of money just to be able to get over what his financing is. And I notice when they sow, this is what he bought it for and this is what he sold it for. What they don't ever show is what his money cost him. And half the time, if you would do the math, he's upside down. How he got to show, I have absolutely no idea. But money is completely in abundance. Now, I'm going to show you something. And I, don't, I will not say anything to anyone. But I want, if there's somebody on the webinar, and I'm not going to say your name. I'm just, I just want to ask you a couple questions and show you. If there's anybody on the webinar that has a fifty thousand dollars in the bank, and you don't know me, so I've got two break prerequisites: fifty thousand dollars in the bank, and you can lie to me too. I don't care if you lie to me; it doesn't bother me. Fifty thousand dollars in the bank, just to play along, and uh, you don't know me. I'd like you to like uh, just shoot me a, a question or say that's me, and I can ask you some. I just want to ask you a couple questions and see if you if you think it's a smart idea. So anybody? All right, everybody right now is poor apparently. Anybody? Okay. So let me let me ask you. You have fifty thousand dollars, and I'm not going to give everybody's name because all y'all be looking trying to find them. And I'm not going to give it up. You got fifty thousand dollars. Here's my question: If I could take that fifty thousand dollars, and let's say if you had it in the bank all year this year, it makes you one hundred and thirty dollars, one hundred and forty dollars in a CD. And if you do a three C, three year CD, you might get almost $220 uh, a year if you got a three if you buy a three year or a five year CD. So you're you're gonna get two hundred two hundred thousand two two hundred dollars off of a fifty thousand dollars. If I said to you, look, here's what I can do. You give me fifty thousand dollars, I'm gonna buy a mobile home park that makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. Here's what we're gonna do. The first year I'm not gonna take any money. I'm gonna pay you back your fifty thousand and on top of your fifty thousand I'm going to give you 10%. That's $5,000. So you give it to me now by, let's see, what is the date today? December 2nd or something. So by next December 1st, I'm going to turn around and hand you back a check for $55,000. That's 10% on your money. That's pretty good. How many people think that's a pretty good deal? If you think that's a good deal, state it. Hey, that's a good deal. 10% and it's backed by real estate and you have the first position of that money to gain that money back off that real estate. All right, so we got lots of people that believe it's a good deal. Excellent. So most people would do that. Most people would be more than happy. Man, I think that's awesome. Yes, I would do that. All right, now, how about if I did this for you? At the same time, not only am I giving you $50, $55,000 back, but next year I'm going to give you 10% of what the property makes. Now let's go over it again. This year I'm going to borrow your money for 10%. I'm going to give you back at the end of the year your $50,000 plus $5,000. That's 10%. And you were excited about that. But now next year, this business makes $100,000 a year that we're buying. I'm, I'm not putting any money up. You're putting the money up. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give you 10% of what it makes until I sell it. And if I sell it at a profit, I'm going to give you 10% of the profit. So let's say we own it now for the next 10 years. That thing means it's going to make hundred thousand a year, which is one million dollars. I'm going to over the next ten years give you a million, a hundred thousand dollars on a fifty thousand dollar investment. But remember, the fifty thousand dollars is in your back pocket after year one. 
So year one, I've given you back your money, and you've made 10% on your money, but now you're going to get 10000 a year for the next 10 years. And then we decide to sell it, and now the property is worth, maybe it's worth a uh, million dollars. So we turn around, we've got it mostly paid off, it's worth a million dollars in the 10 year period, so now we owe maybe 300000 let's sell it, we're going to make 700000 at that chance, and then you would get $70,000 check. Now, those of you that said you had $50,000, how many of you would like to do that deal? Absolutely. Who, who wouldn't sign me up? Thank you. Who wouldn't want to do that deal with your money? That's exactly what I do. Now, I don't care if you have $10,000, if you have $50,000, if you have $100,000, if you have $500,000, and I appreciate everybody, just for the record, I don't take under $200,000 anymore, but I, but I appreciate it. <laughs> that is a real example. Those that are on my team that are on here know that's true, and it does work that way. I'm just saying I don't do under $200,000 anymore. But if if that's the case, if you would learn to structure your deals to where everybody wins, where your investors feel like they're the most important people, you will have all the money you want. And listen, money is a plethora in America. I live next door to a guy that's got $175,000 in CDs. I live down the road and about maybe two miles away from a guy that's got about $250,000 in CDs. I've probably met 10 people at church in the last six or eight months that have $100,000 to $150,000 in CDs in the bank. Now, I don't take any of those people's money, but I hear them and they see what I do and often people say, well, how do you get in with you or how do you invest with you? And they, they, they want to know. The, the, the difference is is that I have something that is worth having and money comes out like crazy. So all you got to do in the mind of a millionaire is to go and try to figure out what is it that I can do that makes people attractive to it so they want to put money or throw money to it. And money is not in abundance is a huge mistake. Money is everywhere. On this webinar, there's four people that have $50,000 or four liars. I'm not sure. Now, here's another mistake, a huge mistake. You need money to make money. I just showed you where I would do a $500,000 mobile home park, and I didn't take a penny out of my pocket. And I didn't give you all the rest of the story, so now I'm going to give you the story. The mobile home park owner wants $500,000. The thing makes $100,000 a year. If you have a question, I don't, Jody, you might know how to, when somebody raises their hand or says something, I don't know there's a hand up, and I don't know how to um, answer that. Maybe you can figure out how to answer that. Or they can just ask a question if you can type it in. Um, you don't need money to make money. That's a huge mistake in investing. Um, but you need some money. So it kind of sounds like it contradicts itself. You yourself don't need money to make money, but you need to find a good deal so that someone else will throw money to it. And, and I know what some of you are thinking right now. This is absolutely crazy. So I want to back up 10 years, about 10 years, maybe 9 years. I want to back up 9 years. And my wife and I had found a mobile home park. And I called a guy and said, I'm buying this mobile home park. I don't know if I'll need investors or not, but you know, I, I got investors that are talk, talking to me about doing it. And I explained the whole deal to him, and I s explained a little bit like what we just talked about, except it was um, two investors, $100,000 each investor. And this is a long time ago. And, and um, the guy calls. I still have the recording, by the way, till this day I kept the recording. The guy calls, and, and I couldn't believe it. Now, you got to remember, this is when I first started – not using bank money and just using people's money. So this was a transition for me. Even though we had several million in real estate, I didn't know how to make that changeover to using other people's money and working with other people to make them money and me make money. And so I explained the whole situation. That night, the guy called me and says, my wife and I were talking, and I just want to let you know that uh, uh, we can write a check for 100 And then he goes, well, I want to make sure you understand, 1000 <laughs> I go home, I play it to my wife and our nanny. We have a, a full-time, that time, full-time living nanny. Well, we still have a full-time living nanny, but she's, she runs a company now. She's not a nanny anymore. Uh, and we, she runs in. I say, you guys got to hear this. You won't believe this. And the guy invested, and we bought him over home park. But he says, I've got 100 I, I can put 100 up for that. And he, he put up 100000 with us. He was my first big investor over ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 when I first started. I, I kept that recording forever because I think, what a cool deal that is. I didn't need any money to do that deal, and here's how. The mobile home park guy, now we're going to go back to the $500,000 mobile home park now. I said, what do you need? He said, I really don't need anything. 
I said, well, how about this? I put 10% down. So I'll put 50000 down, give you cash right now, and then I'll start making you payments. And I said, here's why. If I give you $500,000 tomorrow and you die, your kids are going to get $500,000. Which one of your kids knows what to do about with $500,000? Because none of my kids know what to do with it. Okay. How about if we did this? We set up a trust or we just set up an account where I pay and you we write a note and I pay a note just like to a bank every month, $3,000 a month until this thing is paid off. I'll give you 6% interest. So your money's making 6%. Where else are you going to get that? You're not going to get 6% anywhere else. Right now, you, you put if you take the 400000 450000 and put it in a CD, then you're going to get you know less than a, a, a half a percent. And I said, if you invest with, with me, you got the park as collateral, which you know what it's worth. You've ran the park for 30 years. You know the value of this thing. And if you had to take it back, you could sell it again and keep my $50,000. But if you go invest that 450000 or 500000 in the stock market, and you got all your money in the stock market, tomorrow the thing crashes, you got nothing. You worked your whole life for nothing. He said, that's a great plan. So we went, we set up a note, we start paying a note. Uh, the investor put up the 50000 I pay the investor back the first year, plus $5,000. He gets $10,000 every year, or whatever the 10% is of the income. If it's more trailers in there, it's going to be more money. And over a long period of time, this guy's going to make money. Uh, that He put up the money for me. Now, I didn't need money to make money, but I needed some money to make money. It just wasn't my money to make money. And you, if you guys would learn how to structure your deals so that your investors get paid such a rich amount. I have uh, one of our investors. Sometimes she's on here. We have one of our investors that um, she does a lot of deals with us. And I, I thought maybe she might be on here. I would say on average, monthly, she makes about $2,800 a month off of us, never leaves her house, never does any a single thing. She gets about $2,800 a month, and then she does some house flips with us, so she probably makes another twenty-five dollars or 30000 a year off the, the house flips. And she never leaves her house. She never does anything, and she's making more money. She was, working, she was working a job at a carpet place, and she makes more money now than she made at that carpet place by just working with me. She and, and everybody she talks to wants to be involved with us. Why? Because we make them money. It's just not my money that's making the money. It's their money, which they're going to do something with anyway. As long as I can make a safe investment, that's going to happen. Number eight, this is a huge mistake. You're going to wait to get lucky. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to look for a deal, and the right deal is going to fall in place. The right deal never falls in place. You must go out and find the right deal. You've got to go out and search. You've got to hunt. Somebody in my back 40, 50 acres killed a deer and cleaned it. Now, it might, not, it might not have been on my land, it might have been on a neighbor's land, but they cleaned the deer back somewhere on, on, near my trails, near, near my roads. My stupid dog went all the way back in the back, got that deer carcass, got the deer skin, got the deer head, and I think got the ribs, right? not ribs, the spine, and brought everything, every bit of that to my front yard, where I did not want it, nor did my wife, by the way, want that thing up there. One of my kids did not know what the deer pelt was, so they threw the deer pelt in the back of the four-wheeler. I'm driving the four-wheeler on the tra trails. The wind's blowing faster than I'm driving. I'm thinking, what in the world is that horrible smell? And I went down every trail. I'm like, it's, it's following me or something. This smells horrible. Finally, I look in the back. There's that rotting deer carcass uh, uh, skin in the back of my four-wheeler. Now, that dog did not find it easy. That dog had to search. We got 70, roughly 70 acres. Uh, around us, we got about 500 beside us. Another 121 on the other side of us. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 60, uh, two, four, five, 51, 171 on the other side of us. And so somewhere out there where someone killed that deer, that dog had to go find that deer and bring it back. Now he didn't get lucky. He spent time sniffing and going through the weeds and and turning until he got there. He didn't just act like, hey, look, there's a dark carcass. One by one, he went and found all the parts of that deer and brought it in the front yard. If you're sitting here and thinking you're going to get lucky, best thing you can do is go to that store that we talked about earlier, every whatever day the lottery is, Tuesday or Friday, Wednesday or Sunday, whatever it is, and you go and buy a lottery ticket. That's the only way you're ever going to get lucky. If you get lucky and your odds are so horrible, you're probably never going to make it. If you want to make money and have a future, the, the way is not to get lucky but to be, make yourself lucky. I have a lot of realtors that I talk to, and I tell them, I buy houses all the time at this value. Oh, if you don't make your offers higher, you're never going to get a house. That's a crock. We have houses right now all over the country, and 
we have the houses all over the country because we make those offers and we get those houses. I'm not saying we get every one. Matter of fact, I'm saying we get way less than our percentages. But um, you 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 don't get lucky. You got to get out and work, and you've got to do it and do it and do it. Here's here's what's funny. I have people that'll come and sit down with me, and they'll train to do what we do and don't. I, I I have people flip houses for me. They get 15% of the profit. They put up no money. They just find the houses. They're on my team. They do it. We have a, a lady that watched a couple of videos. She knows me. She knows because she's my aunt. She has no more access than anybody else to me. And uh, she, within the first couple of weeks of doing this, maybe three weeks of doing this, got a house under contract. We were going to close tomorrow. I just got a text from our realtor. We're going to close maybe next week, beginning of next week. It's going through probate, so we're waiting on probate. But she found a really good little house. We bought it for sixty-four thousand dollars. It's valued at about one hundred and thirty. So there's a house, half price. That realtors tell me all the time, "Oh, you just can't do that in this market. You're never going to be able to do that. It just doesn't happen." In some markets, I agree, it's tough. But we did it in Hawaii, where realtors told me to my face, "This will never be done here." And we, my wife and I, would sit and look at them, going, "Okay." And they weren't the competition because they were too dumb to realize it actually could happen there. And, and, and we did it multiple, multiple times. We buy them all the time, uh, uh, these houses that, that are way cheaper than everybody else. Why? We're not waiting to get lucky. We make offer after offer after offer. I've had people tell me, well, you're just better than everybody else. No. Nope. I actually do what I say I'm going to do, and you guys talk about it. You look at it. You want to be involved. You want to buy houses, but you never step out and do it. Remember the one of the things we said at the beginning? you got to not be afraid to step out and to go. All right, number nine, the mindset of a major, biggest mistake in investing is you have arrived. Um, too many people think, man, I, I've got it, I've, I've arrived. Persistence, thank you, Carl, very good. Persistence is correct. I, I've arrived, or man, I'm, I, I'm the guy. You are never the guy. I was watching, I don't know if you guys have seen it, y'all look it up on YouTube, there's Warren Buffett at a college with uh, Bill Gates. They're, they're talking at a college. Bill Gates is now on the board for uh, Brookshire Hathaway, um, and I think he'll eventually run it. When Warren Buffett dies or moves off the scene or retires, I think he'll run it, but I'm not sure. As long as Char most of you don't know who Charlie is, but as long as Charlie's around, Warren Buffett will stay because him and Charlie are like the two peas in a pod, you know, and they do everything everything together. There's a really good book out about Charlie. You ought to read it uh, that he talks about how his relationship is with Warren and, and what they do. But anyway, those two are talking, and they're talking to a bunch of kids, and they give some of the best advice you've ever seen in your life. I just listened to that this week. Um, I, I, I listen to uh, informational videos. I listen to inspirational videos. I look at, at what guys are doing. I watch the news and study the stock market, and I don't even do the stock market. Now, we do stocks. We do stocks called startups, and um, that's the only thing we buy because we can buy them cheap and then wait six or eight months or a year or two years and turn around and, and sell them at a – three, four, five times the value. Um, but you, you see all these things. You want to know what's going on, what's going down. So they're up talking about Trump. They said the, the, the stock market is going to fall after Trump becomes a president. When he's, you know, when, as soon as, if he wins the election, it's just going to go crazy and fall. And I thought, no, it's not, because every business wants to hear that regulation is going to be cut, the stock market is going to go up, which, of course, uh, it, it did. All you had to do is watch what has happened in the past elections to learn that. And I, I think people get so in the, we went back to that's their opinions rather than facts. You got to keep learning all the time, watching what's going on all the time, know what's happening in the world, know what things, if you're starting out today and you're saying, Gary, I want to be a millionaire, I don't know what to do. Matter of fact, I don't know anything about money. Then I would start reading everything I could get my hands on about money and learn to do it. I would. I would try to get everything I can. If it makes money, I would do my best to try to get knowledge in that area and learn how to make money. My wife says you got to do the junk part before you can do the fun part. Our, our uh, nephew's living with us and he has this uh, project and the project you got to cut out a bunch of stuff and put some words on a, on a big board and all this kind of stuff and he comes in with a board and a bunch of papers and all this and says okay Auntie show me how we want to lay this out. She goes well, what's it about? He goes what do you mean? What's the project about? He goes well I haven't decided yet. Okay you can't start gluing stuff on a big board until you first decide what the project is. You go do the junk work, that's what she said, and then the good comes after the junk work. My children, people who know me, people who are around our family, they're like, we would give anything to be in the position you're in. Now, I am probably the happiest married man in the world. 
I am probably the happiest father in the world. I've got six of the most beautiful boys, one just awesome, unbelievable girl. I've got two of the prettiest little grandbabies you've ever seen in your life. I am a spoiled, spoiled man. God has richly blessed me. And by the way, that's real, that's real success. The, the money thing is just for fun. The, the real success is having a great family, having a happy home, and a place you want to come home to. But when you get to a point you think you're somebody and you have arrived and you're better than everybody else, you're making a huge mistake on your life. You ought to be learning every single day of how to do something. You've not arrived. You, you can have a great position, but can't you make your position better tomorrow? Can't you decide tomorrow that I'm going to do one thing that's going to change me? So, um, Somebody asked, why do you only take 200000 plus? Small investors don't have that much uh, to invest. Um, I try to teach the smaller investors how to invest. I do have uh, two people on my team uh, that I do allow people to invest with that I believe in and I watch them. I'm involved in it, but I don't necessarily do it all. I just don't take it. But I do have one is named Brandon, the other one's name is Dan, and those two will do the smaller investments. I just don't. Only reason I choose two hundred thousand is for the amount of stuff that I now do in my business. It's just not really, really worth it to me. But if you'll contact me, Gary at the dot com, just say, hey, I'd like to talk to you. I'll give you my phone number, or Jody can just give my phone number to everybody right now on the webinar if you want to, Jody, um, and 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 put it out there. Um, but that's why. It, it's the hassle of one investor for 50 and one here for 20 and one for 15. Now, I have friends that I do it for, but other than that, it's 200000 It's just, It's just a, that way it's a lot easier to work with. But Jody just sent her my phone number out to everybody. You can call me. I answer the phone. Don't call me right now, by the way, but I answer the phone. Um, constantly fight yourself to be learning and get more. Okay, trading time for cash. This is a huge mistake, you guys. Some of you guys have a job you go to every day, and that's the top of your game. That's as, that's as, as far as you go. Um, I, I look at businesses and look at things all the time. We had a heat and air guy uh, come to one of our houses we're doing here in Savannah, and it just happened to be the owner come in for a little bit. The owner come in, and he was talking. Now, in his life, he worked 60 hours a week. He's been doing it for 25 years. And he's going to have to work 60 hours a week till he dies. That's his business. Now, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying if you would learn to stop trading time for money and start trading talent for money, your life would change. If you're looking for a paycheck every Friday, and I'm not saying you've got to eat. I understand some people are in a position where they have to eat. I like a paycheck on Friday. I just, my wife never pays me one, but I would like to have one. Um, but if, if you're looking for a paycheck on Friday and that's all you have, I literally have uh, somebody I know that I'm very, very close to, and here's their statement. And uh, they live in Hawaii. They've worked with me forever. And they're like, are you kidding me? Work more hours? I've put in eight hours today. Now, here's their other statement to me. Man, I wish I could go on all them cruises. Gosh, I wish I could travel to a different country. Man, I'd like to go spend a month in Europe. They, ask, they say all these silly statements, but the reason they can't do anything is they leave the house at 7 to get to their job at 8, and they get done at 3.30 or 4 o'clock, and they leave that job, and they go home and sit in front of that TV. Now, listen, they know more about the sports guys than you could ever imagine. They can tell you who's on every ball team and who the pitcher is or who the quarterback is or who the owner of that team is, where that team's at. I can't even tell you the names of the teams, whether they're NFL, is that AFC, VFC? Or, or if it's basketball, whether they're in the one league or the other league, I don't know what that is. I do know in baseball is American Needle National League. The only reason I know that is I used to have tickets to the Cardinals when I lived in St. Louis all the time. But and I knew hockey because I had tickets to the Blues when the Blues were there. They might still be there for all I know, but they used to have bigger blues in a hockey arena. Um but I don't know all those things that are going on because I don't spend my time sitting in front of a TV watching what sports and things that are happening. I want to spend my time, every waking minute I have that I'm not spending with my wife or my children, I need to be figuring out some way to make money. And that's the difference. When you start trading time for cash, you see, I may work six months on, right now I've got about seven months in on a deal. I started in May, yeah, seven months on this deal I'm working on right now. I'm not going to get anything, listen, this is important, I'm not going to get anything off of this deal for at least three years. 
at the end of three years, I might make as much as 100000 a month off this deal. I'm going to take that gamble. I'm not going to get any cash for my time until that happens at the end. I just started, Dan and I and Jesse started working on a deal this week. It's a $54 million property. They have a five, $5 million. And today I said, that's, uh, I talked with a, a guy today named Harvey. And I said, I need $5 million. And you can have all of it. I want 5%. Now, the reason I want 5%, that's probably $10,000, $15,000 a month for, for me and my wife the rest of our lives and our kids' lives. So I'm okay with that. I'll take that. And I give him the whole deal. I won't have anything to do with it. Now, my partners all make the same, so it's really about $43,000 a month. But we split it. And uh, each one of us, because we all have different parts of the deal that we're doing and we're bringing it to, to the table. And we don't get the big deal. We're not necessarily doing this big deal. It's over our heads. But we're taking it to the people who can do it. We're going to get paid nothing until that thing starts making money. We're trading time and talent for a future. And then we get the cash. And I think this is a better one. Number 11, and this is the last one today because I think I'm out of time almost. Yep. Um, we're, 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 we leverage systems. That's what we do here with, with our group, with my team, is I leverage people that want to want to flip houses and don't know how and don't have money. I have plenty of money. I need more people to find houses. So people join my team. I've made it easier than anybody that's ever done it in their life. You join my team. You do a deal with me in one week. You do a deal with me in five weeks. You do a deal with me in five years. It costs a thousand bucks to be on my team. I give you a thousand bucks back. When you do one deal, the first deal, the first thing you get is your thousand dollars, and then you still get fifteen percent of the profit. Now, the reason I do that is I don't need people to give me a thousand bucks to train. That's just to make sure they're serious. I need people to find me houses, and so I leverage other people's time to search. Carl's on here today. He's made about 20 offers. Brandon's on here today. He's probably made about five or six offers. I think we have eight other people on here, and I'd say out of that eight, we probably made another 25 offers. My aunt just uh, made an offer on a house that we're waiting on an answer back the uh, day before yesterday. And um, I, I spend most of my days signing all kinds of different offers and things on properties all, all, all over the country. I leverage other people's time or leverage systems. Let me tell you something that I like that some of you are not going to say. You're not going to like it, but let me tell you. Uh, what we call MLMs or network marketing. I know you don't like them, but if you would put your time in and you would work them, you'll make a fortune if you do it right. Now, if you just sit on it, you don't put any time in it, you don't work on it, you don't do anything, you're not going to make any money. But if you leverage it and you go hard at it and you do it, you got some of the richest people. Bill Gates said, uh, you can look it up, he said, if I had to start all over again, the first thing I would do is get involved in MLM. Why? Because it makes the fastest money by growing the people doing it yourself. That, that's a, a smart way to do it. You're not doing the work yourself. You're leveraging the people that you can find to do the work. And so leveraging, if you're not leveraging people, my, my son was with me uh, this past week, and I told him, James, you're very good at being a carpenter. What you need to do is find three other people like you that are working just like you are. And you pay them $25 an hour, but you, you sign them out to people for $50 an hour. And then you sit at home with three people making you $75 an hour. And he said, Dad, that's a good idea, but who can do that? I said, anybody who puts their mind to it. He goes, then you have to deal with employees. Then you have to do this. I said, all right, stay poor or die, but that's the way it's going to happen. I'm, I'm not giving him anything. He's got to do it on his own. And I love him, but I want him to learn. I'm not going to give you money. I don't give any of my children money, by the way. I don't supply them for college. I don't supply them a car. I don't buy them a car. I don't loan them money for a car. They've got to go out. and If they want a car, they can get a job and make their own money. My kids are not going to walk into what Tiffany and I leave someday that could be millions of dollars for them unless we spend it all on cruises, which I'm trying to do right now. If Royal Caribbean will make a Gary DeBose room on every ship, I'll have spent all my money. But until Royal Caribbean does a Gary DeBose room on every ship, I'm going to have to stick with uh, keeping a little money for the kids. And uh, if they get this money, I want them to know how to handle it. Then they have to go through the hard times themselves, and they have to make things work themselves. But I said, son, if you would leverage other people's time, and they would be happy because they don't have to go find the jobs. They're making 25 bucks an hour. And you're going to be happy because you're charging $50 an hour for every guy, so you're getting – you know, uh, 75 bucks an hour off of these three people. And then if you do work, now you're making $100 an hour if you pay yourself $25 an hour. Or if you charge 50, you're getting 125 an hour. <coughs> it says, it sounds really easy. I said, it is easy if you'll decide you've got to work every day. See, he wasn't there when I had to pass out flyers every day when I first started. 
He wasn't there when Tiffany would go door to door introducing herself, telling her I'm a real estate agent in Hawaii, and then built up a great business. It, 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 it's the start. It's the hard times that makes them do something. If you want to change your life, all you got to do is start leveraging other th systems, other things to try to do that. And I, and I hope you can find some things. All right, we're uh, out of time, and I didn't even get to the whole. I got multiple more uh, pages, so. Uh, We'll have to do another one sometime, Jody. We'll, we'll just stop with this one. Does anybody have any questions? If you have any questions, I'd like to try to uh, maybe answer your questions. Anybody got a question or something out there? I don't know what that is flashing all the time there, but there we go. That took care of it, Jody. Anybody have a question? I'll take a few minutes to ask you, answer your questions. Um, I will tell you, as I told my one of my boys the other day, there are some dumb questions. Try not to ask those, but just ask good questions. I'm just kidding. My wife's over here laughing at me. If you don't have any questions, you got a chance to to ask somebody that you would like to ask. I'm ready, but otherwise, uh, we're going to call it quits. Nobody. Nice. Wait. Oh, well, that didn't work so long. Went for a while. What are your thoughts on Connecticut real estate? Uh, Connecticut real estate right now is really slow. So here's your problem. You have you have um, days on market. If you look at all your real estate, I'm sure you've already learned your days on market are really high, right? What you've got to do is just build into your so we buy things at 70% of value. If I'm going to have to hold that thing for a year, and that's going to cost me a $1,500 a month or $1,000 a month, then I'm going to buffer another $12,000 plus maybe three months extra, so like $15,000 on top. So if it's worth $100,000 and I was going to buy it for $70,000, I'd have to buy it for $55,000. Now I've put the time in there for the Connecticut market. It's just slow. People are buying in Connecticut. And they're just not buying left. The other thing you want to make sure you do uh, is, is research really well, as, as hard as you can. You want to research what houses are selling, and then in the Connecticut area, that all of that state or whatever town you're going to be the closest to, um, you want to make sure that that house is selling. So don't a, a five hundred thousand dollar house in Connecticut where only two hundred thousand dollar houses are selling. That's not a good deal. Even if you bought it for 50%, people are only buying $200,000 houses. So you got a $250,000 house you paid for. It's worth $500,000, but if no one's buying $500,000 homes, then you have a $500,000 home you got to hang on to for who knows how long by the percentage. We have a whole. I have. A, if you go online uh, and, and and look on YouTube at my in my YouTube channel, I have hundreds of videos. Find the videos that is on time value money or markets. Uh, on, on on different things on real estate and watch some of it. it's all free it's all out there you can watch all you want to and hopefully maybe some of those will help you a little bit but Connecticut can be a good market if you just buy your time uh, thank you for your willingness to bless others hey thank you very much Bill I, I appreciate that um, what is Brandon's number <laughs> now, Jody can you send out Brandon's number please and uh, just tell him I told you to call him, talk with him. Brandon is right, my right hand guy here. Let me just unmute him for a second. You got a microphone, Brandon? Hello, Gary. Hey, buddy. How are you? So Brandon's on here, and uh, Brandon works with me. Uh, we do houses together, and uh, he runs some of our houses. Uh, and Brandon can also, as I said before, he, he has the ability to work with you if you have some money to invest, and it's less than the 200000 mark. You can work with Brandon. We do the exact same thing. It would be the exact same um, joint venture. Everything that I do will be exactly what you get with Brandon. And I do watch over it and make sure we run every deal by me because I'm you know, allowing you to best. But it's a, if you want to do that, you're more than uh, uh, happy to do it. What is Brandon? How much cash do I need to start? Al, tell me a little bit about what – can you tell me what you're wanting to do? And then I can, I can come back. If you can just type in real quick. How much cash you need to start? What are you wanting to do? And let me try to try to answer what your your question is for that. I have a webinar on Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry, Brandon. That's Brandon. I'm thinking, who wrote that? Brandon has a webinar on um, December 15th at 9 p.m. Uh, on researching your city and your area. Uh, that is a go. Jody, can you talk? Is your internet working? Yeah, we had set that up, Brendan, as a team-only webinar, but yeah, it, it it'll be on December 15th. Is it team-only? Um, yeah. You know what? If, um, Al, if, you, if you'll text Jody and just ask her, can you watch that webinar, I'm sure she'll show you how to get on there. It's my actual team webinar. It's not a public webinar. 
but I, I'm sure she'll allow you to, if you just text her and say, hey, or, or send her a message right now, say, hey, can I get on there? I'll have her contact you and, and send you a, a link, uh, and I'm sure she'll be able to do that. All right, um, let's see. Well, yes, Brandon, that is a go, buddy. Um, he's going to teach on uh, how to research houses in your area. Do you do tax liens and deeds? Uh, Michael, I don't do um, tax liens and deeds, although we, Tiffany and I might start here in Savannah where we know the, what's going on in the market a little bit. We kind of watched some here recently, and they were bit, really bought right. Um, if you can buy them right in a good market where you can sell, yes. If you just go out here and start buying property in the middle of nowhere, you can really get ate up. I know a lot of people that go out and buy these tax liens um, and, 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 and deeds and, and get into trouble. Now, not everybody. I'm just not, I, not now nor have I ever been a deed kind of guy. Let me tell you why. Um, if I go and buy a note and I don't know everything about that house and the note, I could be in trouble trying to catch up with all the problems of that house or the note. Someone's already in trouble. If I was going to go tomorrow and I was going to start doing cotton, and a guy says, look, I've got these two cotton fields. They, they, they don't hardly ever produce, but sometimes they do. But if you want to go out there, you could take these cotton fields over. I'm thinking, if I'm going to go into cotton business, the last thing I'm going to do is go out and buy a couple of fields that don't produce no cotton. That's the last cotton picking business I'd ever be in. Thank you, man. My wife always makes fun of me because I sing I never pick cotton. So I'm not a big proponent of buying notes or deeds or tax liens unless I know that it's a good cotton picking area. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. I want to know that's what it is. So we can do that. Al, oh, a realtor. Okay. So um, and your question was, how much money do you need to start? Um, if, if, you're, if you're doing things on your own and you don't have a history as an investor, it's going to be hard to raise money. But if you go out here and find a house that's worth $100,000 that's in pretty good shape that you can buy for $60,000, I'd scream it from the top of the building to every investor I could. And I've heard people say, well, if you do that, you'll lose it. I'd rather scream hard and try to find somebody who's honest and wants to work with me than not have a chance at it all. That would be my feeling. And so I've always been very open when I find a good deal. Um, I'm more cautious with older investors' money, so I make sure that things are really good, and I put them. Um, this is. I'm not trying to be ugly, and I don't know if any of my investors are on here that are older, but if a person is 65 years old, they don't got a lot of years left to make a bunch of money. So I try to put my older investors on the higher profit items, so they can make money faster to turn it over to supply for their future because their future is close. If I've got a guy that's 30 years old and puts in up, putting up $100,000, I might put him on a lesser profit house but do more over him over a long period of time. Does, does that make sense? But with my older investors, I've got to be really cautious, one, to not lose their money, and I've, and I've not lost any money yet. I've got one investor I'm about to lose some money on, but I'm cho he and I both are choosing to lose the money so we can go on and make some more money and make it up. It doesn't matter. That's the first time I've ever lost on the house and I'm getting ready to lose on. But, um, and that's going to happen, by the way, in your career. But to start out with, the best thing that you could do is, is to um, get somebody who's got money but not talent, and then you go get all the talent you can from knowledge and training. Watch all my videos. Uh, I've got a good friend named uh, Kevin Reynolds. Watch his videos. There's a lot of guys out there that, that teach on real estate. Uh, not many of them do it for free. I don't do it for free either when we have classes. Um, it's a thousand. Like I said, it's 999 bucks. But you get all your money back when you come to a class. And, and you do a deal. Once you, you become a part of the team and you do a deal, then uh, you, get, you get your thousand bucks back. So. But Al, I, I, I think there's a, there's a good possibility that if you don't have any money, then maybe talk to Jody about working with us on the team and you're in a great position if you're a realtor to do so. I might have to pay your wife or something because um, you guys join as a team Then if, if you're married. I don't know if you're married. But um, you know, if you want to talk to her, or maybe maybe say something to her and, and, and give her a holler. All right, anybody else before we go? We went way over an hour, or hour and, hour and ten minutes. Anybody else? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, we appreciate you guys being here. We do have a great team if you want to be a part of it. And you, you want to start making money in real estate, but you don't know how. And you're looking for a guy who's honest, and I'm just a real dude. I am what I am. I ain't nothing special. I'm just this guy. But I've got a lot of good friends, a lot of good investors, a lot of, a lot of money to do stuff, and uh, 
and really really look, look forward to you guys uh, having a future. If if you got questions, you can always email me Gary at defineplace.com or Jody J O D I at defineplace.com, and either one of us can maybe try to answer your questions. Jody's very smart when it comes to the real estate side, and she answers a lot of the emails and stuff that comes in. And so if you have a, a, a question, you, you can ask that. And then also you can always call me. Uh, maybe not tonight. It's what, like uh, 11 o'clock or something, 10.30. But uh, you can, uh, you can uh, always call me during the day. I answer my phone. I'm not a guy that doesn't. I answer my phone, and uh, uh, you can talk right to me. Thank you guys for being here today. May God bless you all. Hope you guys uh, have a Merry Christmas because it's coming up. Those that are on the team, we will see you guys on the 15th. Brandon will be doing a great webinar uh, on that. Brandon, you got anything to add about your webinar? Anything you want them to look up or learn to use? Maybe they could go on uh, Best Places or something and do a little bit of practice or what? You got anything? Best Places is definitely the, the best website to look at and get to know a little bit. But uh, no, nothing else to add. I'm really going to just pick a random city and show them how I would do it just like we did there in Savannah. All right, good deal. Uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it, and uh, he'll, he'll give you some good information. So everybody on the team, please be there. What? That's a good refresher. Oh, my wife said that's a good refresher, of course. You guys realize, uh, and some of you that are new to us, my wife and I are best friends. We also work together every day, and uh, we're a team uh, at, at, in our family and at our house with, with us and Tutu and Brandon and, and Dan and Jesse and uh, – we, we all are, are very involved together, and we want you to succeed, so I agree with her. She's saying go and watch, watch this webinar. Even if you already have all this information, do it again so that you get better and better at it to learn how to find these houses to make the deals happen. Everybody else that was a guest today, we're glad you guys are here. If you ever want to be a part of us or know what's going on, we'd love to have you just talk with us for a few minutes on the phone and find out what's happening. Um, you guys have a great evening. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. See you. Thanks, Jody. Appreciate it. Goodbye, all.